Hello and welcome to this session. I am so excited to talk to you about this today. There are a ton of people joining in. I wanna say thank you for choosing this track. So today we're gonna to be talking about simple ways to reach, engage, and convert prospects into customers. My name is Justin Neely and I'm a project manager at GoDaddy. And like many of you, I'm a small business owner myself. I get to help a ton of other small businesses with their website presence, more specifically with web design. But my real passion is around social media and marketing, which is why I'm super stoked to be able to talk to you about this all today. We're gonna be covering a ton in this session today. We're gonna, we're gonna think like a digital marketer. We're gonna develop a content strategy for your social channels. And we're gonna create, schedule, and publish posts to promote your business. And at the very end of this session, I'm gonna be answering your questions. So make sure you drop your questions in the little link below. And then if you want even more help after all this is said and done, go ahead and hit GoDaddy guides at the top. You can schedule a 20 minute session with a guide and kind of go over uh, some of your, your top, just whatever's top of mind with you and your business. So let's go ahead and jump right into this here. So in a, in a, when it, it's when a survey to uh, of CMOs, they, it's founded that the that social media was the most prominent use of where they want to spend a lot of their attention, and it's it, it levels the playing field for all of you small business owners because you don't need a fairly large budget to contend with the big guys, right? You can basically be scrappy and have a smaller budget, or even just do it organically. There's a ton of businesses out there doing that today. And they're being successful at it. But I did want to just kind of level with you that social media and digital marketing can be overwhelming. I've been doing this for over eight or nine years now. And I know at the beginning of my journey, this was just yet another hat that I had to wear on top of running my business and finding new clients and working with clients and doing all these things. It got to be overwhelming, but there are simpler ways to do this, which is what I'm going to cover with you all today. Again, why I'm so excited to talk to you about this subject. So we really want to start to think like a digital marketer and, and talk about why this matters. Well, for one, it helps establish, increase your brand awareness, consistency, and recognition. And that consistency is going to be coming up a ton in this session. And we're also going to keep your, keep customers engaged and informed to increase your traffic, your sales, and your leads. And now we're not going on social media just because we haven't posted in a while and it's time to post. We're going on there to basically build our business and grow it and get those paying clients and customers, those long time fans. And that's why this matters. So before we really dive into the whole strategy behind what we're going to be talking about, I wanted to highlight Antonelli's cheese shop. So this is a business owned by John and Kendall Antonelli. Uh, they basically have a cut to order cheese shop in Austin, Texas. They were doing incredible stuff pre COVID world, but, and they, they, they like to essentially just say that they brainstormed how to reinvent their 10 year old business in 10 days. They're doing a lot of great stuff. And now they're bringing the party to fellow cheese lovers with virtual pairing events and online orders. And in a second here, I have a video that talks about their story uh, and what they're doing to essentially thrive in this world today. So let's check that out. Hey y'all, I'm Kendall. And I'm John. And we are the Antonelli's of Antonelli's Cheese Shop here in Austin, Texas. We are a cut to order specialty artisan cheese shop. And our goal is to do good, eat good. To us, that means that we represent producers who manage their land sustainably and regeneratively, their herds ethically. And then in turn, when customers do the same for us, we get to live that do good, eat good cycle and give back to our community. When the pandemic hit, it became more important than ever to communicate effectively with our customers, telling them when we were open, how they could support us and what we were doing to try to stay in business. I would like to say that we changed our business, 10 years of business in 10 days. Yeah. And some of the pivots included making it easier for people to buy online, um, but really just picking up our social media game, staying relevant, staying active, just letting people know that we are there. For social media, we predominantly use Instagram and Facebook. And then we also send a weekly newsletter uh, once a week that we haven't missed since two months before our business opened. November 2009. Yep, 10 and a half years ago. I will say that we don't pay any fancy marketing budget or advertising agency. We are all homespun. I have 
a 12 month social media plan that three years ago I hired a marketing person to do with me. I kept it up for like one month that year and I have never since looked at it. It doesn't mean I shouldn't, um, but what I think it means is there is hope out there for all of us small business owners who are juggling a lot and just trying to stay relevant. We are getting a ton of engagement on Instagram. We're getting significantly more um, responses and comments and reach outs and Indeed. direct messaging than we were pre-pandemic. I think another part of it is me doing my best and I'm, I'm not always great at it, but following up in the comment field of, oh, do you offer this? Or where can I buy this? And I'm like, part of me, it says, well, it's right there on the website. But the point is people are overwhelmed these days and they have a lot and they really just need you to tell them, oh, here it is, go right here. I think some of the areas where we see uh, us uh, falter a little bit is when we try too hard. It's when we try to design this most perfect graphic and we hire a designer to do it and it's like, it didn't feel right. It didn't end up being authentic. We've probably lost a lot of money um, trying too hard along the way. When I, right when I, before I post, I'm like, what is the purpose of me posting? But really it's, will it make somebody smile or will it bring joy to somebody's life? That's what I think I think about each time I post. Whenever we make a decision in the business, especially a, a marketing conversation and advertising, we're talking about our mission, do good, eat good, or our personal mission to spread joy. Be you, be authentic. People also want to be a part of something that's positive as well. We started out just selling cheese and we thought, how are we going to make a difference in our community? How are we going to be a social impact business? And yet we've, we've found a way to do that um, through our way. I absolutely love their story and their journey of how they've really progressed through just everything that they've had to go through that you all are going through on a day-to-day -day basis. And a couple of call outs there is, yes, they did start and hire someone to help with their social media strategy, but they tossed it out the window and they, they, were, they just winged it. And there's hope for us all to be able to just understand that, that we, we can do this ourselves. And yes, there is a ton of value in hiring someone. I, I don't want to downplay that at all, but you can be scrappy and take some of these strategies that we talk about today and excel. And I think what, what they do exceptionally well is they are authentic with who they are. You can see in a lot of the videos that they, that they were playing through, they were just dancing around being goofy with their virtual wine pairings, wearing cheese hats and a bunch of other stuff. And when, when you really win as a business is when you show who you are and it helps people relate to just what you do and show that it's not just a faceless company, you are human first. So now let's talk about some of the key components of your content strategy. But before we really dive into what those are, let's start with the first rule. And that is your content should always serve a purpose. I don't want you going out there and just posting because you haven't posted in a month and you should probably post. There should be a purpose behind why you're creating the content that you're creating. And I really break it down into four different categories of content that you can create. You can inspire, you can inform, you can promote, and you can educate. So let's break those down a little bit further. So the first one is to inspire. So this is the type of content that inspires your users to take some type of action. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can be like Cubs the Poet here that does motivational quotes where they say, shake the dust off your spear. There's a reason we are here this time around to be or to be more. That's our question. And I don't know about you, but that makes me want to just get up and figure out what else I'm doing today and see how I could do more with my web design business and how I can reach more uh, more people on social media and just be more. You can also talk about success stories of your customers. The B Agency does a great job with this where they go through a bit of a client introduction talking about their client and how awesome they are. You can also tap into your followers' personal interest and show that you know exactly what they like and you're all about helping them. So the first type of content you can create is that inspiring type of content. The second type is to inform. And I know most of you did a lot of this, uh, especially a couple months ago and even now today. And it's just really giving updates with what's going on 
with your business operations. A couple of examples here, we have She Moves Mountain Talks, just gives a quick little update saying there is a lot of uncertainty that they're trying their best. And essentially they're, they're gonna give you more information as soon as they get everything figured out. And then Bow Hill Blueberries just talks about how they're social distancing. So you wanna make sure, especially in the world that we live in today, that you're keeping your audience informed because if, you're, if you change the way you do business and your audience doesn't know about that, it's gonna set up a poor customer experience that they try to do business with you and just can't. You can also do some behind the scenes of your business or BTS, not the band, uh, just showing off all the cool stuff that your customers don't really get to see. Whether it's you making some spectacular cookies for your real estate listing, listing to make just the house smell like moms back in the day, or if it's you just building out your, your product or services using a 3D printer, whatever that looks like, that little insight that they don't get to see goes a long way. And then you can talk about new products or services that you offer. And this is more so not necessarily on the promotional aspect, just but more so just to inform of all the cool stuff you're doing. I mean, I, it's used up a, a ton, but Apple is one that people go crazy over whenever the next iPhone releases. People are lining up for miles around the store. People are excited. People want to see that information. And your loyal fans want to know what's going on with your business. Because if they've if they've trusted you enough to do business with you and follow, they want to know what else, what other cool things that you've had. Because you've already delighted them before but they're gonna expect that in the future there. So the second part is to inform with the content that you're creating. The third way to really have a purpose behind your content is to promote. Now this is really just you promoting some type of offering to your audience. So you can do things like drive customers to your websites, just little links to the website, or encourage subscribers. You can run contests or giveaway, which is super popular when it comes to trying to just build your audience, give away something super cool. And now what I recommend if you do try to do any contests or giveaways, make sure the prize is specific to the audience you are serving. So if you're out there to help potential podcasters, why not give away a podcast mic? That way you won't get random people that are just signing up just to sign up that don't really have anything to do with your business. You get your true fans that want to follow you. Uh, you can also promote coupons or specials. And another pro tip here, when you're creating these coupons, create a different coupon for each social media platform. So if I'm going to post this on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, or wherever else, I'm creating a different promotional code for each of those platforms that I'm sharing. This way I can see which channels are doing the best when it comes to driving results for my business. And if I see Instagram, I'm just killing the game and I'm getting a ton of sales from Instagram, I'm probably gonna start focusing a lot more of my attention there versus a channel that didn't really drive any sales over there. And it's pretty simple to make different coupon codes and track those with a ton of different platforms out there today. A couple examples of brands that do this exceptionally well, we have Yoganic Flow. They have this free lead generator, it's essentially they're doing free outdoor yoga and they want you to check them out, have a free session in the hopes that you see how awesome this is, that you're gonna be a paying customer from then on out. And then Bow Hill Blueberries talks about really just the, the, the product that they're offering, talks about how they can buy in bulk and even adds a bit of a sense of urgency saying, hey, you have until two today, bulk order now. And it makes you want to just click that button that much quicker. And now the last type of content that you can create is by far my favorite, and that's to educate. So this type of content that really adds value to your followers and shows your followers that you understand their problems and have solutions for them too. But you can do things like case studies about a problem and the solution you found, how-to guides and research that helps customers understand something better. And now I wanted to call out this brand that I follow quite quite religiously, I would say. That's Hello Brianna Consulting. She helps people with their personal brand uh, and she her content is on point. But this is one that I, I took from her, her Facebook page where she has a little bit of a teaching moment saying, hey, it's three signs, it's time to scale your brand with those tips. But what she really does well is she weaves in other aspects of the types of content that we're, we're talking about here. So she has the inspiring aspect inside of this educational content. Like in the caption, if you need a sign, this is it. It's time to get a plan in place. Let's work with the clap emojis. It gets me jazzed, it gets me going. I definitely wanna get, it's time to work, right? 
Uh, so that's when you really want is to when you start to weave in those other aspects and not necessarily make it just about here are a couple tips, have a nice day. Um, and you, it also helps if you can weave in a story, whether it's about you uh, finding this learning moment and talking to your audience about it or a client, a customer of yours too. And then She Moves Mountain does another great job of just tips for leading trad. They give their four tips and then they have a bit of a, a, a skosh, if I, if I will, a promotional content at the end, basically saying, hey, classes are sold out. But if you want a private class for you or your friends, you can absolutely set that up here. So teaching first with a little bit of promotion if you want to just kind of learn a little bit more about their business. And now one pushback that I get from my clients when I'm helping them set up some of their social media strategies is that, well, if I'm just teaching my audience how to do what I'm selling, why would they ever want to hire me? They could just get the content for free. And my response is pretty simple, is I can go online and on YouTube and find someone that can teach me how to, I don't know, change a radiator or another part of my car. And I can watch and go, cool, that looks pretty straightforward, but I am never going to try to do that on my car. I'm gonna hire a professional because I'll just do a lot more damage myself. Um, so you start to win that way. And those people that were gonna just do it themselves anyways, they were never gonna hire you in the first place, but at least you've added value and you helped them out. So now if they have someone that brings it up, whether it's a relative or friend or acquaintance that has an issue that you solve, they're gonna think about you because you helped solve their problems. Like, cool, this is the person that can absolutely help you. So you wanna make sure you're educating your content, adding value to your audience's life because you don't wanna just sell, sell, sell and do promotional content all the time. Try to stick to that 80-20 rule where up to 20% of the time you're promoting, but the rest try to inspire, inform, or just educate your audience into solving their problems. And now that we talked about some of the types of content, I think it's really important to talk about the timing and frequency. So the most important part of your content strategy is to be consistent. Again, consistent, consistent, consistent. I mean, I want you to think back to a time before Hulu, before Netflix, before any of those other on-demand streaming services and to where you had to wait until Sunday night at eight or Tuesday at seven to watch your favorite shows. You, you waited patiently or like me, impatiently for those shows to come on, but you waited and you knew what to expect. You can essentially start to do that same type of cadence with your audience. And it can be as frequent as it needs to be with your business. So you can have Motivational Mondays where you have an awesome quote that comes out 3 p.m. every Monday or probably 8 a.m. to get people going throughout their day or and have Feel Good Friday where you talk about a customer story that happens every 4 p.m. You start to get in that rhythm and it helps your audience know what to expect and they start to look out for your content. And now you really wanna to start to get in the habit of posting at least five to seven times per week. And I know this, this seems like a lot, but there's, there's some reasoning behind it is because most social media platforms have some type of algorithm behind it. So whatever you post does not get in front of as many eyeballs as is actually following you. So the more you post, the better. And now these posts don't have to be super polished, top of the line type of posts. I mean, like Antonelli's Cheese Shop said, they, they, when they tried too hard, they, they didn't succeed. You really want to just be authentic and use things like Instagram stories and just highlight some of your day or some of the cool stuff you're doing, or just talk and document about what's going on, or just try to solve some of your, your, your audience's questions and, and solve their problems there, uh, or send out a couple tweets, but you want to stay relevant in your audience's mind. And then with the timing here, once you start to really post and get, get creating content, I do want you to look at the insights into each of the platforms. So every social media platform pretty much has this. It basically tells you when your audience is most active on the app. On the left-hand side here is my Instagram account. And I can see on Tuesdays at 12 p.m., most of my followers are, are the most active because they're probably at lunch, uh, doing whatever, scrolling Instagram, killing time until they have to get back to running their business or uh, clock back in with their work. So I know that if I wanna get in front of as many eyes as I can, Tuesdays, 12 p.m. is absolutely it. And then bringing this all together uh, is really about creating a content calendar. Now, a content calendar is really just you planning out the content that you're going to be creating. So these can be things around upcoming events, promotions, holidays to plan around. And I know Halloween is coming up pretty soon. I mean, it's almost October already. I had to check my watch to make, make sure what day it actually is. But you don't wanna wait until October 31st and just do a simple happy Halloween, everyone, 
everyone's going to do that. It's not going to get any attention. But what you can do is start to really tie in the whole Halloween event, the whole month of October and create content around that. And that really builds up. But the way you do that is by planning it out and not letting just life take you, right? Because we have to do so many things already and planning out that content calendar is huge. So let's talk about that a little bit more. So your, your content calendar, it, it kind of seems scary having to plan out all that content, but it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. So it could be as simple as a Word doc where that's how I started of just planning out, cool, next Tuesday, I'm gonna post this post, here's my caption, here's my image that I wanna use, and then the following Tuesday, I'm gonna do this with this caption, and then it's all planned out for the next couple of weeks, and I don't have to do anything. Or it could be as complex as using something like Airtable, where it's an editorial calendar with multiple contributors and all sorts of crazy nonsensical stuff. But whatever it looks like, it, it, it's up to you. But the point here is to really plan out your posts, stay organized, and capitalize on those relevant moments and holidays. Now, my pro tip here, because I know as a, a small business owner myself, like there's, there's always a fire I have to put out or something I have to do. And I don't want to disrupt my day to have to go and make a social media post. So my pro tip for you is to batch and schedule your, your posts in advance using something like websites plus marketing if you're going that route. Um, but there's lots of other solutions too. But what I mean by this is I essentially create a couple weeks worth of my content once. So I don't go and have to post, stop whatever I'm doing that day and create that content. I take Mondays between 2 and 4 p.m. to essentially create all the content. Now my creative juices are flowing. I've dedicated this time to create that content. And the cool thing about Websites Plus Marketing is I can schedule it all out and it'll auto post for me. So that way I don't have to stop what I'm doing to make sure my posts go out. That cadence is set. My audience gets the content when they know when to expect it. I can just go about my day and it saves me a ton of time to either focus on my business or just sit back and relax watching TV or doing whatever else I, I need to be doing that day. So batch your content. If you don't do anything else other than this, like this is the most important thing. Save yourself time, get those creative juices going. And now I did wanna have you walk away with a couple of ideas that you can use after this session, wait, don't do it yet, uh, but after this session is what is something cool that you do that your customers never get to see? This is some of that behind the scenes stuff that they may be able, they may only see what the final product is, but they don't see your entire process and how much hard work goes into that. Share that with them and show them how cool of a job or a business that you have. Uh, and then also what questions do your customers commonly ask you? This one is huge. If you think about like, just go through your DMs or your emails uh, or just questions that people ask you on the phone, start to answer that with the content. Now you're solving their, their questions before they even get to you. So now the conversation they have with you is skipped up a few steps. You can go into the real meat of the conversation. And then you can also talk about what is happening in the current season, like holidays, cool TV shows, sports, whatever that looks like, and capitalize on those pop culture mo uh, moments that you can leverage to engage with your customers. I know there's a bunch of stuff going on right now. There's a ton of content you can potentially create around that. But some awesome ideas that you can start using right as soon as this whole event is over. So... We know the type of content that we can create. We know the kind of timing and frequency that we need to start to, to think about. Let's look at the different social media channels that we can create. And now what's really important here is not necessarily the type of content that you need to create is you wanna be where your customers are. And this is so important, especially for any type of business. Like I know myself, I am in love with Instagram. It's probably where I spend most of my time but my audience might not spend a lot of their time on Instagram. They might be on Facebook for the most part or on Twitter. So I know if I wanna make sure that I capitalize on where their attention is, I need to create content on Facebook and on Twitter. It's not, it's, it can't be a personal preference. It's, it's all about my audience because I'm here to serve them. They're the hero of my story. And then when you, you understand where your audience is, Pick the format that you excel in. And I'm not saying that you can only do this one, but if you are fantastic on video, start creating a bunch of video content and share with your followers. It's gonna be the differentiator between you and another business. Or if if blogging and the written word is just, it's your jam, like th then do that. Focus on the long story captions in Instagram or on Facebook, let people read your story. And you, know, you can still kind of mix and match with whatever you're doing, but if you're really great at something, why not do more of that? 
So then when you're, when you're creating this content, what I, you, what you don't want to do is what I see a lot of other businesses do. And, and it just hurts me is just create one piece of content with the same caption and share it across the board, across all channels. And yes, that does save time, but it doesn't help you in the long run because now you're, you're, you're actually not saving time in the long run because you're having to spend more time, more marketing and building content for those other channels to try to build them up and grow your business. So not all content is created equal on these channels. So left a little cheat sheet here. This is more a guide, not necessarily the rule. What works for my audience might not work for your audience. The biggest thing here is trial and error. I think that's how most of us learn anyways, especially with our business. We kind of figured things out as we went along and we figured that this, this stuff really works with my audience, but this doesn't. So test these out with the content on these different platforms, but if it doesn't work for them, listen to your audience and start to look at the insights of what they're doing. And then, so we're going to talk about really bringing this all together with the, the types of content, the scheduling, the batching, and the content calendar in a cool little digital marketing uh, demo using websites plus marketing and the over integration. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, here we go. Begin by going to your social media marketing page by clicking marketing on the top panel and choosing social. And this is your social media dashboard that allows you to monitor and execute all your marketing efforts. So just click create social posts to get started. Now there are plenty of templates here that you can customize, but I already have one ready to go. So I'm going to choose skip to post. And if you're like me and have a pre-made image, click the photo icon to attach it to the post. I recently added this photo to my account. So I am now going to add the image to my new post. Now I'm able to add a caption for my image. So I'll go ahead and do that here. From there, I'm able to see how the post will look on each of the platforms I'm publishing it to because every platform is unique and I can make adjustments and edits to the caption so that each post is best suited for that platform. I'll go ahead and add some hashtags here for the Twitter post. Now that my captions and images are all set, I can choose to publish my post now or I can schedule it for a later date and time. I'm going to go ahead and schedule this for October. And this makes it so I can plan my content ahead of time and get it all readied and scheduled at once. No need for me to come back on specific days to promote events or making last minute posts to keep my audience engaged. And then I'm done. I get a confirmation that the post has been scheduled and upon returning to the social dashboard, I see it under the scheduled tab. And from here, I can easily reschedule or delete the post if I need to. Once the post is published, I'll be able to keep track of how it's performing in the same place. And this panel here allows me to see likes and comments for each post in addition to other key metrics like page views and followers. And that was Emma in the, the first track today. She helped me out with that demo. So thanks to her. Um, but you can see there that essentially I created, or she created the, the, her content calendar for her business. And you can start to kind of plan out and see all the content that you're going to be creating adjusted as you need to with different hashtags, like on Facebook, hashtags aren't really a thing. You can kind of do it, but it's just not worth it. But Twitter, it's definitely relevant. So I want to adjust the caption a bit and add those hashtags in. So a ton of your peers are using this websites plus marketing feature to basically save themselves a bunch of time. So I highly encourage if you're using this product already to add that in to your just workflow to save you that time. Now with, with all of this content, there's a difference between organic and then paid. So organic is just you posting your content, but now you can boost your post and get that extra exposure that you might need, especially at the beginning of your journey. Now, when I, I talked about having a purpose in mind with the content that you're creating, you should have a goal in mind with the content that you're going to be promoting, whether it's to gain followers, direct people to a lead generator, video views, make a sale, promote a contest, whatever that looks like, have that goal in mind. That way you know what's winning towards your goals and what's not. And what's really cool about social media and having this platform is 
we don't have to have big campaigns for flyers or newspapers or billboards anymore uh, that we don't know whether it works or not. We can do boosts as simple and as low as $5 and it can really make the difference. And what's great is you can see what's working in real time to see Great, this, this post isn't really doing that great when I boost it, but this post, this is winning. So I'm gonna add five more dollars to it or 50 more dollars to it or whatever your budget looks like. So you can kind of test and play around and see what works for you. And I think that's what the big differentiator when it comes to the paid marketing aspect when it comes to social media. And now talking about like your goals and, and the content itself, you really wanna make sure you're measuring that impact. So key metrics that you wanna look for when it comes to organic social media is your reach. So how many eyes saw your content, your likes, your comments, your shares, and your followers. And I, I implore you to go back to your last, I don't know, 10 posts and check those out and see what posted really well and which ones didn't and start to analyze why that might be. Is it the type of caption you used? Is maybe the hashtags were different? Is it the image was a picture of you versus a stock photo? And start to analyze what works well and what doesn't. And when it comes to key metrics for your paid social media, the conversion and click-through rates are super important. So how many people saw the ad versus clicked on it? and then the return on ad spend. Again, going back to that goal in mind, if you're trying to convert those visitors into customers, if you spend $50 on a campaign, did it bring you back anything? And if it didn't, you had a $0 ad spend, but if it brought you back $150, that, that had a return on your investment. And you wanna really double down on that type of content. But I think this is a fantastic place to pause and go through your questions. I was kind of checking it out in my other screen here that it was all just filling up. So I'm gonna spend the next 15 minutes or so to answer your questions. So make sure you add those in the bottom below as you as I go through these. All right, so let's jump right into it. So Elier, if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize. Uh, how much do hashtags help when promoting in media or posts? Uh, hashtags can be really helpful depending on the platform. I said earlier, Facebook, it's not that relevant, but Instagram, Twitter, uh, even LinkedIn, all are it's all super critical for that. And I, I think the amount of hashtags you use and what hashtags you use definitely varies from audience to audience. And what I would recommend you do is kind of, again, that trial and error, I, there's no specific answer to this, but you wanna use some super popular generic hashtags. So like if I'm a web designer, I can do web design. That's a generic hashtag. There's a ton of competition there, but then I might drill down a little bit deeper and then do web design, um, L, uh, Elementor web designer or whatever that might look like and start to really drill down into some of the key niche that I, I actually work on. So test it out, use those analytics to kind of see what's working and what's not. Um, and what, what, when it comes to like Instagram, cause I'd spend a lot of my time there. Uh, what I, I don't want you to do is just, just blast 30 hashtags in your post and hoping one sticks. I like to stick between eight and 12, give or take. Uh, depending on how creative I'm feeling, but I'll kind of jot down in my notes app uh, a bunch of different hashtag examples. So I'll have group A with my hashtags already set, group B with my hashtags already set, so on and so forth. So when I'm creating the content, I'll just copy and paste that in so I have the hashtags that work. And I can start to look at the, the content that I'm creating to see which hashtag group is doing the best work for me and bringing in that return on my investment, even though it's time investment, that sweat equity, I still want some type of return. So thank you for that question, Elier. All right, Deborah M says, how far ahead of time should you post an event? So you definitely wanna let your fans know something when something's coming up, um, especially like an event like this. I mean, think about what GoDaddy has done to promote this event and when you first heard about it, right? Uh, it's, you definitely want to kind of keep the buzz going and, and alive. Like if my event is next summer, I probably won't start promoting it until a couple months in advance, uh, just to make sure I'm creating content. And then I'll start to plan out my content so that it, it stays relevant in front of my audience, whether it's different insights or speakers. Uh, I'm a WordCamp Phoenix organizer and I help out with the social media aspect of it, of Phoenix. And we started planning out the content months in advance and basically dripped it all the way out to up until the event as frequent as two to three times a week to infrequent as one time a week. Um, 
So there isn't a necessarily, again, with social media, there's never a specific answer. It's all trial and error, but at least a few months in advance to start getting that buzz going and collect those emails. That's what's most important with your event. Don't just rely on social media, lead them to an email. That way you can send it to their inbox in case they don't see your social media posts. So thank you, Deborah M. All right, Susan R, where do I find the social media marketing app? Is it part of Ober? How much does it cost? Uh, so over is a separate app, but it's also integrated into websites plus marketing. So if you have websites plus marketing at GoDaddy, um, it's just inside of the little marketing navigation at the top. And there's a social media option. You can start to play around and create your content and schedule it all out there. Uh, at help.godaddy.com, we have a ton of, of help articles and how to videos to really walk you through some of these aspects. So it's definitely a great aspect there. Um, the product itself costs $19.99 a month or $180 a year, or you can start for free with uh, the one month free trial on our website. So you can kind of play around and see if it's right for you, which I think it might be. So thanks for that, Susan. All right, let me go through these other questions here. All right. So Malvina R asked, how do we share on the website the BTS or behind the scenes? As I'm not really good with social media, do I open a new page on a web page or do I blog it? Um, so the behind the scenes is, is a really great a tool when you utilize things like the Facebook stories or Instagram stories, uh, or even Twitter kind of played around with it a little bit. But those are just the, the authentic, just here's what I'm doing. Um, WordPress is coming out with web stories soon, but that's a little too in the weeds to, to go from there. Uh, but this is really going to be more so on the, 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 your social media platforms, not necessarily on your website itself. So inside your Instagram app, all those circles at the top, those are stories. And you can click the little camera icon and create your own story. Um, and I think what a lot of people holds people back from that behind the scenes is I, I'm not good on camera. People are going to laugh at me or they're going to think this is just weird and cringy. Um, but especially if you're just starting out, that's kind of the best time to play around with it. I was terrified. I, like when I'm telling you sweating bullets, terrified to get in front of camera and talk to people in this setting. And now I'm talking to you and it, it just gets better. Practice makes progression. So the more you practice at it, the better you get. And it's kind of cool that your audience gets to see your progression through your, through your just journey as a business owner. Uh, I mean, if I think back with someone I follow a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk, like he went, he started doing his just wine vlogs and now he's everywhere. And just the, his progression from the not so great produced videos to now just killing it with the content. And you can really show your journey there too. And I, I definitely recommend if you look at any people that you follow, go to the YouTube channel down to like their very first videos and see how different that was. Uh, so use those social media platforms and those stories to just share that behind the scenes of what you do. Or if you want to blog about it, that works too. And just kind of document your story, whether through article or video there. All right. And then Nasira asks, do you offer email campaigns like constant contact? So yes, our website plus marketing does have a an email marketing integration as well. There's different widgets for to add subscribe forms onto your website and create campaigns. You can also do things like drip campaigns, which are my favorite as a marketer. Again, anything that's automated where I don't have to go in and disrupt my day to do the better. So these are things that if I sign up for a newsletter, I immediately get an email. And then a couple of days later, I get another email. And a couple of days later, I get another email. So you can set that up with your audience. So whenever they subscribe, your website works for you on autopilot. So they're getting your content out without you having to go in and, and write those emails, if you will. So you can do things like introduce your business, talk about some educational content you have, maybe talk about your, your services or, or promote some of your products. Every now and then, again, that 80-20 rule, but it's super important to have that email marketing aspect. So great question, Nasira. So let's see. So 
So uh, Patria L asks, I have website already. However, how do I get the chance to use websites plus marketing social dashboard without building a website through GoDaddy? My domains have been through GoDaddy. So the cool thing is this whole digital marketing integration is, can, is a standalone solution at GoDaddy. It's just called digital marketing. Um, so go ahead and check that out on the site. You don't have to have the websites plus marketing website builder solution if you already have a website. And this works with any website that you might have regardless of where it is. All right, so from Anonymous, uh, my business is a cleaning company. How can I make something as mundane as that be exciting through social media? Um, so there are so many ways to make this exciting. And I wish I could remember this person on TikTok. Um, she is basically a, 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 a cleaning company. She cleans houses uh, and she has millions of followers on TikTok just going through and showing people all the cool, I don't know, life hacks of cleaning their house and teaching people how to do it. Again, teaching someone what they do, but it goes a long way. So start thinking about like the cool things that you might be doing through your day to day that people might not know about, whether it's how you quickly fold a, a shirt or how you really get in the nooks, nooks and crannies or use some of the materials that you have at home to get a permanent marker on a wall that your, your daughter just wrote off all over the, the wall back there. Thankfully, this video isn't here. Uh, but whatever that looks like, start to get that little insight. Every business has has something cool that other people don't get to see. And you can really highlight and capitalize that by creating that, that content. And again, you want to practice at it and get better and start to listen to your audience to see which ones they really like by looking at that reach, looking at the comments and the likes and shares, create more content like that. But just show people what you're doing and talk about it and be human and show people that you're not just a business, you are a person too. All right, let's see here. Hello, I'm a new author. This is anonymous. Is an email list important? Um, absolutely. I think we we start to focus on the social media so much because it's in everyone's top of mind. Um, so. An email list is still important. I talked about the algorithms earlier in this session. So not everyone gets to see your content. And I know a lot of people say email marketing is dead. Don't send emails. Nobody opens them anyways. There's still a ton of people that I follow that I religiously open their emails as much as possible. I mean, I even subscribe to a WordPress daily newsletter and I get content every single day. And I'm in there every single day. And even if your audience doesn't open up your emails, they still see that they got an email from you and it keeps your brand top of mind, even if they're not going in and clicking. So I think it's super important to build that email list. And what you don't wanna do with building an email list is just having a simple, hey, subscribe for my newsletter. Unless they're already a diehard fan, that's just not gonna work. What you wanna do is create some type of lead generator there to where it, you're essentially giving away some piece of free, valuable content to your audience. So this can be things like eBooks or uh, a blog post that really did well that you converted into an eBook or a video. It could be a checklist. It could be a free consultation. Whatever that looks like, there is, you're essentially selling something in exchange for their email. You want to make sure that it adds so much value that they're excited about giving you their email address. You can really start to build that list. All right, so Anonymous asked, how do you promote your business when your product is still being developed? Thank you in advance for the help. Um, so I think this is super cool, especially, I mean, we're all building something in these days and starting a new side hustle. I mean, I've started so many sides in my life now. Um, I'm a side hustle connoisseur, but I think when when building that that buzz, you really want to let people know what you're working on and show them the journey. Maybe add a release calendar on your website of uh, showing them all the cool stuff they're doing uh, and maybe invite people to beta test the product before it's live to the public. Get those early access. That way you get the, the cool testimonials in the very beginning before the site goes live or the product goes live. So you already have that there, that social proof and start to build the buzz that way. All right, we'll go through a couple more, but we're almost done. 
All right, Andrea E asks, should we always have specific hashtags for our business? Um, for the most part, I would say yes. Uh, I, I go through, like I said, I have a list that I use predominantly when it comes to hashtags for my business. Um, these, these don't always have to be the only hashtags I use. So if I start with group A, I might add a couple hashtags that are relevant to the, the post that I'm creating. I think that's really important with the hashtags that you do, you do use is that they are relevant to whatever content that you're creating. So if you're talking about making a cake, you're not gonna just post in some random hashtags about, I don't know, drinking water or whatever that looks like. Because if someone's looking through that hashtag on their explore page or wherever else, and they see your content, it just doesn't make sense to sense about what they're trying to look for. So you wanna make sure your, your content is relevant, but I would have a specific set of hashtags you primarily use that that are around the niche you, niche you are in, niche, niche, whatever it's pronounced. All right, go through maybe one more here. Uh, will the, Charlene ask, will the social media app include posting to LinkedIn? So not at this time. Uh, it, I don't believe it posts to LinkedIn, uh, but I know we are developing a ton of cool features for it. I mean, we talked about it in the open, all the cool stuff we're doing. Uh, so I would imagine sometime soon we would get that added. I mean, because I'm on LinkedIn a lot and I would really like to automate some of that as well. <laughs> All right. All right, Stephanie S asks, advice for a new idea business that people haven't seen before. Oh gosh, um, uh, this, this one's very tough. I think with uh, something that's never been done, get people to kind of test it out give their feedback uh, so you can start to see what problems they solve and really talk about what problem your your new idea for your business solves that people haven't seen before because they don't know what you do or how you help them, you're not going to win uh, at the end of the day. So you want to make sure that you're explaining what problems you're helping solve out in the world today. But again, we have these resources here for you uh, to kind of go on and grow for more. Again, you can do a digital marketing session with a guide to by clicking GoDaddy Guides at the top. But I am super thankful for this whole session. This has been a ton of fun. Uh, I hope to do a live session when everything gets to normal so I can actually meet all of you. Uh, there's a couple things to do next, but again, I just wanna say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your attention and your time. This has been an absolute blast. Thank you.